More than a billion of this planet's inhabitants still live without electricity. Being able to plug in can be a life-changing experience, as we'll show you here in Nepal. In this edition of Global Japan, we take you to a remote village in the Himalayas to see how Japanese know-how in hydropower is helping people help themselves. After flying into Kathmandu, it's a short hop to Pokhara, gateway to Annapurna and a popular destination for foreign trekkers. We head into the mountains, crossing a river we hope won't cut us off on the way back when the rain comes. We arrive at a school in the village of Kalika, where kids and staff greet us with flowers and apply a tika, or red powder mark, signifying a blessing. Headmaster Jaman Bahadur Gurung says the kids are much happier now that their classrooms have electricity from a hydroelectric generator from Japan. In fact, the school has become so popular that they've added a new building to accommodate the extra kids. Many, many children, many, many students want to uh, join in our school because there is the new, uh, new technique, new technology in their school. It's called Kappa, one of six hydrokinetic generators installed in Nepal by a Japanese company called Ibase. Norio Kikuchi, grandson of Ibase's founder, created Kappa, and this pilot project is backed by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA. We just use the energy of the flow, so which is called kinetic energy in the physics terminology. Um, so we have this uh, special case called diffuser, which is formula one diffuser technology. Okay. But also we have um, airplane blade, airplane shaped blade, which we use some airplane technology. The electricity enters the school through this cable into this equipment that adjusts and distributes the power to the school's lighting, projector, computers, and chargers for lanterns and mobile phones. Meanwhile, the children are busy in class, including seven-year-old Romina. Before the Kappa generator, and when it rained, the school had to close its wooden shutters to stay dry, stopping the classes for lack of light. Romina leads us to her home, a tiny thatched hut on the edge of the village. Her mother says the generator has transformed the school and their lives. It's great. The kids can learn much better now. When there is no power in the home, the lanterns can provide light, so the kids can learn more until late. Romina says thanks to the lanterns, she's not afraid anymore and can study no matter what the weather. On a dark and windy night, when it's raining, I feel frightened, she says. As soon as I turn on the lantern, I feel better and I can read and write. We get a taste of that rain, a storm pounding the roof of the school, forcing the staff to close the windows. We also need to drive back quickly to Pokhara or get stuck in the rising river, challenging to say the least. From Pokhara, we fly back to the bustling capital of Kathmandu to see how the kappa is made. Ibase's local partner is Nepal Yantra Shala Energy. Suman Pradhan is project coordinator. In the future, we are also planning to export. Working with Ibase, this really helps us how we need to work to achieve the international standard. Kikuchi says the generator costs about 15,000 euros or $17,000. He says local production, along with possible subsidies, could cut that cost in half. Kikuchi has combined ingenuity with idealism to spread the benefits of Japan's tech savvy to other corners of the world. And the technology transfer can also benefit his company. We sometimes need to make the machine cheaper also. So I think we can export Ibase produced motors and generators for Hitachi Limited over the last 73 years in Japan. We should make these machines beneficial to the world. Beneficial for this village, where the mothers invited us to lunch, showing off the lanterns they charge at the school, a small though life-changing step which could be multiplied across Nepal and beyond. That's all for now on Global Japan. From all of us here on the Euronews team in Nepal, we say namaste. Sayonara, and thanks for watching.